Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back over here working on our Lucas Horizontal Boring Mill and still working on getting the saddle kind of finished up and ready to go back together. So, so far on the saddle, we have scraped everything in. We've got our turkite installed on the bottom. The turkite has been scraped. We've checked the alignment uh, to make sure that the saddle is square to the head. Uh, everything is pretty much ready to start reassembling, but before I do, I do need to put oil grooves in the turkite, and uh, once that is done, we can go ahead and start putting this whole thing back together and getting it ready to get basically uh, pinned back down and with all, everything in it that's needed to uh, properly make the different features function in here. So it will move back and forth. There's also a cross uh, slide in here where the table will move back and forth. All that goes on uh, some lead screws and drive rods up underneath the bottom. We got to get all that put back together. So that's the goal of today. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get started. So uh, let's uh, flip this back over, get our oil holes drilled back through the turkite, and then we're going to scrape in some oil channels and start reassembling things. So on the top here, you'll notice there's some holes uh, in here. And these are oil holes. Uh, this one actually feeds the uh, cross side screw, uh, these feed the ways. And uh, because the turkite's blocking them, what I'm gonna do is just take a hand drill here. And we're gonna drill these out. Open them back up. There's also a epoxy that has uh, gotten in there as well, but we're just gonna open them back up. And I got a couple over here on the other side to, to drill out as well. I've got this flipped back over now and you can see where the hole comes out in here. Previously, they just kind of had a circle um, kind of milled into the table to allow that oil to distribute around. We're going to do it a little bit different. I'm just going to scratch some oil grooves into this turkite in kind of a zigzag pattern. I got a little block of wood here and uh, we're just going to kind of come off of that hole here. I'm just going to start by kind of sketching it out. So we're going to come that way, and then we're going to come all the way across this way. We'll come all the way across this way, and then I will uh, make a little short jog down here in the bottom, about to right there. I don't want to go all the way to the end because I don't want the oil to come off the end. I'm going to keep it in the in the in that groove if at all possible. And now to cut this, uh, I'm just going to again. I'm going to use my scraper, and I'm going to start right here because you can see a little bit better. And we're just going to turn the scraper up on end. And this uh, turkite is fairly soft, so I'm just going to start making a groove through there. Um, it's a little bit difficult here because I'm constrained, but it'll, it'll cut pretty easily in both directions. And once I kind of get that groove started, I can just kind of come in here and just, uh, open it right up. And it hasn't got to be perfect. We're just, uh, making a channel for oil to go and I'm going to go all the way down to the uh, metal up under the bottom. You can see that shining through there and uh, I'll probably go around the other side and come back on this end down here uh, and we're just scratch so it's right in there. It's fairly easy. No big deal to do. Come from this direction. So here you go, you can kind of see the, uh, the little design in here. Again, that just gives that oil a place to go and distribute out fairly uh, uniformly across uh, that entire uh, uh, little pad there. Um, this should really help keep things lubricated. I notice I don't have it really exiting anywhere. It stays captured in there. 
and uh, that's what you ideally want. Um, so that one's done. I've got the other three to get knocked out. As soon as I get those done, we can uh, start working on reassembling some of the parts and pieces on here. So there you go. We got all of our oil grooves cut in here, the little zigzags, so everything looks good there. Next, we need to get our gears put back in here, reassemble this. There are basically some gears that drive the cross feed uh, on the table. Uh, there's a little clutch mechanism and uh, a part that the drive shaft goes through and then there's a worm gear that actually powers the, um, turns the, the, the transmission of the power 90 degrees and, and drives the cross feed screw. So I need to get all those parts. I don't remember exactly how they went together, but I'm sure hoping that once I kind of get over here, we can figure it back out. I don't think it's too complicated, uh, but we'll see if we can get started on that. So first off, let's just kind of orient ourselves here so we know what we're looking at. We're looking at the bottom of the saddle and uh, there are three uh, shafts that kind of run through here that do different functions. The first one is a lead screw that goes through this uh, screw right here. And whenever you engage that and it turns, it's going to, of course, move the saddle up and down these ways here. So per or parallel to the main, main ways. There's a second shaft in here that, or there's two other shafts in here, I'll just put it that way, and they are both, they're not lead screws, but they just have a, a, a keyway milled all the way down that shaft, and they engage in different gears and do different functions. One of the lead screws um, controls the cross feed on the table. So there is another lead screw that kind of goes into this piece down here, and uh, basically you have a shaft that's coming at a right angle to that. And when this shaft turns, it's going to basically cause the, uh, the lead screw in the cross side to turn. And that's your power feed on the table. And that's what we're going to be working on uh, putting this assembly in right now. The third uh, shaft that has a key in it actually uh, just kind of goes through the saddle. It doesn't do anything on the saddle. It goes to the tailstock and then raises and lowers the tailstock same way that the uh, cross slide works here. When that shaft turns, it engages some stuff over in the tailstock, but it's just passing through this. So um, first off, we've got this piece here. This is a worm gear that mounts up to the worm up above that actually transfers the power 90 degrees um, to, to go from that shaft that's running perpendicular to this shaft. So I'm going to just put a little oil down here in that and we will drop this in and it's got to get lined up just right. There it goes. And that shaft just turns like such. Now we'll comment that there is a fair amount of wear on this worm gear, but it's got enough teeth in there that it will, I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I would have loved to have replaced this, but I'm just not really set up to cut worm gear teeth uh, in my shop. That would have been a very difficult part for me to remanufacture and it's, it's gonna work fine like it is. Now, on the other side of this, we got another piece that fits in here and uh, that is this one. Now, this one here has this kind of uh, face on here that matches the face here. And this is on a shaft that it slides back and forth. So this piece is gonna come down in here. It just fits. And like I said, whenever I get it in there lined up, it will come over and engage. There is a yoke that comes in here. This is where we can turn this thing, engage it and disengage it. And uh, basically whenever I do that yoke, it's either going to be engaged there or here it will just free spin. It's not engaged. Uh, we rotate that yoke and it, it engages. Now I don't have the lead screw installed, so I'm going to engage it because it'll kind of hold it in place uh, while I finish assembling the rest of this. Next, we need to come in with our yoke. Uh, we're not put that at, we got the yoke itself fits down right here. And, uh, this shaft 
it's going to come through the end. Let me uh, again put a little uh, lube in here. This will be rotating in there. This shaft feeds in from the end. It's going to engage the yoke down here. And there is a key that goes in there. So now there's a handle that goes on the end, but uh, whenever we rotate this yoke, that's what's going to slide it in and out. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's how that works. Now we've got this uh, handle that fits up on that. Like such, there is a uh, keyway in the bottom and then there's a pin that goes through that that engages it. This is the pin and I don't think this is the original pin or I don't think there was, was originally a pin in this. I think this was something that was added later on because this is a roll pin. Everything else on this is uh, tapered pins. So I think that would have been a tapered pin originally if it had been a pin at all. Let me grab a hammer. What I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to use this other pin to kind of help align that. Since I can't see it, all right, I got that started now. That's got the pin in there, and then there's also a set screw. And that looks like the set screw over there in my pile of parts. All right. Should, yep, when I pull it back, of course, it's going to So now we can kind of see how this works. We got this handle over here. Whenever we pull back on it, it will disengage this. Push down, it engages it. We're going to leave it engaged because, again, that keeps everything lined up. Uh, we're not ready to put the cross screw in here yet. Uh, when we do, it'll be ready to go. So that looks good. Now we need to get the uh, worm and mount it up here above it because that's what's going to transfer transition that rotation 90 degrees let's get that all put back together all right up here on the top we have this box and it's got that worm gear in it uh, that is keyed and this is going to engage the well this is the worm that's the worm gear and this is going to actually flip down on top of this. There's a couple of alignment pins and a couple of bolts that hold it all together. Like such. Now there, the bolts actually come through the other side of this. We're going to have to kind of flip it up to get access to it. And I will note that, you know, we got the one shaft here that's going to be keyed that will be turning everything in here. And then there's another hole on this side. There's, it, this is just a through hole. That's where the, the third shaft uh, goes through. So we need to flip this over and uh, need to put the bolt in, two bolts in here. There's also a set screw down here on the bottom of uh, this yoke that needs to get tied. There's a key in there, but there's also a set screw that kind of holds all that together. Uh, we need to get all that lined up and put back in there. Let's got this tilted up where I can get these bolts in to hold that bottom piece in that we were just working on that has the 
the worm in it. So let's go ahead and get that now that we have access to it. Alright, snug that one up good. And then there's also a set screw. Let me get that tightened up. Here's that set screw. And go ahead and just tighten that up real good and snug. That's uh, just keeping that yoke from uh, sliding in and out. It's keyed in there, but that will keep that shaft from sliding out the end. So I think we got everything buttoned down now. I'll go ahead and set this on down the rest of the way. So the next thing for me to do is I need to get this uh, shaft going in here and lined up with the keyways that are up inside this thing. So I've got my shaft over here. Let's pull this toward me just a little bit. And I've got it kind of laying up on a support behind me. So that I'm going more or less straight into this thing. And what I've got to do is get the keyways lined up and kind of feed this rod in here. All right, I'm into the first one. There's actually three pieces that have keys in there that we got to get lined up on. That gear is kind of floating a little bit. I'll tell you what, let me get a piece of metal or something I can stick up in there. All right, I got a punch over here in this hand that I'm kind of reaching up inside this and trying to get the bearing in there, or the, the gear in there kind of picked up. I think that moved in a little bit. Let me get a flashlight and take a look up in there. Yeah, so the problem is, is there's three pieces inside of here. They're all independent of one another. There's the uh, outside bushing, there's the bearing or the, the worm. And all three of them have to be lined up with that key. And getting those three pieces in alignment is not as easy as it looks. It's just going to take some fiddling until we can get it. This is where an extra set of hands and an extra set of eyes would really be helpful. But I've only got two hands and two eyes and they can't all be where they need to be. I think I got it. All right, let's see if we can get it to go through the third bushing. There it goes. All right. I'm gonna put this about halfway through where it's fairly balanced. And we're going to bring this whole thing down here a little bit closer to the end. And I'm going to lower this whole thing down now. This goes into this and pins in place. Although I think it goes in there in this direction right here. I'm going to probably have to drive that in from the back end. Let me go get a lead hammer and tap that in. And we have a tapered pin that will lock that in place. Let me get a hammer and punch and tap that in place. Roll that over 
just a little bit where I can get it with the hammer. And that should be locked in place. All right, one down, two more to go, and uh, my worm gear is turning in the middle just like it's supposed to. I'm just turning this by hand, but when I turn this rod, you'll see the uh, worm there in the middle is turning, and that will in turn actually feed the cross slide in and out on this. There'll be a screw going through there, and that's what will drive that. So good, one drive rod installed. Let's get, I'm gonna go ahead and put the back one in. Uh, there's nothing, it just goes up through a hole in there. There's, it's just a clearance hole, so there's nothing that is driving but we'll go ahead and get it put in place. All right, this one's just gonna go up through that clearance hole. Let's see if I can get it lined up down here. All right. We'll get it lined up. So for on this pin right here, when I got the machine, it had a bolt down through this, but it looks like a number seven tapered pin will fit down in there. So we're gonna try kind of reinstalling that and getting it back in there. I should have it kind of lined up like it needs to go. So again, let me tap that in from the end. And uh, I think what I'm going to do before I try to drive that home, I'm going to take a reamer and just lightly ream it since it had a bolt in there just to make sure we've got good connections on it. Let me go grab, let's see if I can knock that out this way. There we go. All right, let me put my reamer back down in there. I need to kind of roll it around where I got room for it to go. And I'm using an eight point socket here to kind of drive it. I don't want to get too carried away with this reamer. I just want to kind of freshen up that taper. And so to make sure that it's stays in place and roll that around that pin is just a little bit on the short side hmm i think i may have a longer pin let me go grab one i would i would rather it be kind of sticking out the bottom just a little bit so we have full engagement this pin is about a half inch longer and as you can see, it's sticking out on both sides a little bit. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna tap it home. And the top part is more or less flush. I'm gonna roll it around. We will uh, mark that. I'm gonna cut it off so that it's uh, not sticking out too much. And then we'll drive it home. I just hit that with the belt grinder and uh, got it back down to size. And we will tap that home now. That ought to do it. And that looks good. And now we've got the lead screw that needs to go in here. And this one is going to thread up into the uh, new bronze nut that we made down here. Let me see if I can get it started. Put a block of wood down here to kind of support this. And... Uh, We'll just use our hand crank and start threading that in place. All 
I'm going to see if we can get that pin to drop in there. And we'll drive it home. And that'll be the third shaft all lined up there. Looks good. Something I want to go ahead and do before I put the top on and have easy access is I got these oil places and I want to put oil caps on them. There were actually oil caps on all these when I got this and uh, I want to, I got brand new ones that I'm going to just uh, put in here. These are just press fit in. Um, I'll just take a little block of wood, put on top of this, and just kind of tap those in place. Uh, this one here, there it goes, and I got another one back here in the back. There's three on the front and three on the back, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get all these put in place. There we go, to the other side. I think we're ready to put our gib back in. Now this gib, if you're not familiar with gibs, this is how we kind of tighten this whole thing up. So you got the little piece that comes over in the front, there's a piece over in the back, there's actually a piece on this back too. And what this gib does is this allows you to tighten that up as it wears. So if you look, this gib, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is tapered. Uh, it's thicker on this end than it is on this end. And there's a matching taper machined into this piece down here so that as you slide this gib in and out it makes that gap wider and wider down there and basically allows you to tighten things up and to adjust it um, with wear. So we're going to go ahead and kind of install this back in here. Um, I'm just going to slide it in there and as I start tightening it up you can see it's getting tighter and tighter as we come. Now I've got a adjustment screw. There's a couple of slots in here that this screw fits into and this allows you to tighten it up as well. So uh, I think I'm going to have to start by kind of tapping this into place to get it down a little bit farther and then we'll engage the screw and start tightening it up and adjusting that gib. Let me grab something to kind of tap that with. Now we got it where it's uh, adjusting good. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and oil this up and start moving this thing back and forth a little bit and just get it a feel for how tight it needs to be. So I'm just using the power feed here and my saddle is uh, sliding down the track. That's exactly what we want. And uh, I'm just kind of evaluating this gib, trying to look at it, decide where I need to tighten it up to. We've been running this uh, table kind of through its paces. I uh, ran it all the way down to the end of the table Ran it all the way, or I am running it all the way back down to this end of the table just to make sure everything's going good, the whole range, and uh, everything appears to be going really well. Uh, I think I got the gib adjusted where it needs to be, and uh, once we get, once that is done now, well, I just need to put the uh, plates up under the bottom that keep this from lifting up, and I think we'll have the saddle more or less uh, reinstalled. I'm going to bring this all the way down to the end and uh, I think we're going to call this good. So I've got the plate up underneath the bottom. There's some screws holding this in and we're just going to tighten this up. All this does is it just goes up underneath this little piece on the bottom and uh, prevents this from pulling up. Uh, there is a little bit of a clearance between this lip and the bottom here, so it's not rubbing directly on it. Uh, but it's like I said, it's just there to keep it from uh, where 
it won't pick up. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. All right, I think we got this clamp on. All looks good. I got another clamp on the back side. We're going to do the exact same thing back there. And uh, I think we'll have this saddle pretty much wrapped up. So I'm going to do that one off camera and we'll check everything out. All right, I think we have our saddle pretty much reassembled, at least to the point that we can right now. Um, and I'm extremely happy with how everything has turned out so far. So uh, everything went back together pretty easily. We got everything looks like it's functioning like it needs to. Uh, we got everything reassembled. The only thing left to do with this saddle now is to get the table mounted on here. And we're gonna be working on that in an upcoming video. And on that, again, we're gonna have to scrape the turkite into these uh, top ways. We're gonna have to recheck the alignment again, like I think I had mentioned earlier in this video and get the uh, cross slide uh, lead screw and everything installed in here. There's some bearings that gotta be in, uh, and put in on that as well. But uh, we are getting into the short rows, I think on getting this thing back together where we can do some, at least uh, get this machine back where we can use it a little bit. Uh, still got to deal with the tail stock. I haven't really done anything on that yet. Uh, we've got a, uh, get it cleaned up. We got to get it painted. We got to get it remounted back on here. I don't think there's going to be any major rebuilding in on that. Uh, I will probably have to install turkite up underneath the back ways to raise it up a little bit to get it in proper alignment with the head because we have kind of adjusted the height for the turkite under the saddle as well as the turkite under the table. Um, and anyway, we'll, we'll have to do some measurements and figure out how much we need to put in there to get it in the proper alignment with the, the spindle here. But uh, other than that, we are, we are making good progress and uh, things are moving along real nicely on this project. So with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap for today. As always, thank you so much for uh, watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, always greatly appreciated. And as I always say, a big, huge thank you to all the supporters of the site out there who help out on Patreon, PayPal, etc. Uh, again, I, I say this every time and I truly mean it. I could not do everything that I do if it was not for the support from you guys out there that really makes it possible for me to do, take the time to put, do these videos and, and put them together. And, and uh, I really appreciate your help in that front as well. Uh, with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.